My friend, it is time to multiply your miracle. Hallelujah. Multiply your miracle. Okay, you can't tell me that God has never done anything awesome or exciting in your life. I mean, even if you were an unbeliever, if you were not a Christian, even still, I have had conversations with so many people and I've told them about how the Lord spared my life out on the highway. And I've had conversations with people and they all of a sudden they just open up and they talk about the time when their car went sliding off and something happened and this and that. Everybody's got this crazy story where somehow, maybe not everybody, but most people I talk to and they, they're just, they're very fortunate that their life is still around because they were in a situation where they should have died. And that's so common. Multiply your miracle. I've had situations where I've been able to share my faith with people and sometimes it's been just meeting someone else in their place of their need. Two situations years ago where I had prayed for, uh, one time it was a six-year-old boy who had this lung condition that he was supposed to be dead within six months, like game over and they didn't give him very much time. And so I prayed for him, was uh, sharing the word with his family, prayed for him, and to the last of my knowledge, when the boy was around, I don't know, I, I lost count, uh, not, act, not part of my life in a number of years, but let's put it this way, last I'd heard, he was doing fine at the age of 14, and he was supposed to die within six months of being six years old. So... Another time I prayed for a woman while I was on the phone. This was when I was working in retail. And this woman was just freaking out on the phone. And she got a miracle while I just prayed for her on the phone. Her lungs had been collapsing on her. She'd been in the hospital. She just got back out of the hospital after 30 days in the hospital. And she could hardly breathe. And I prayed for her on the phone while I was in prayer. In fact, before I even started praying was when she got her miracle because I just told her that uh, I think her name was Dorothy and I says Dorothy she was freaking out because she thought I was trying to sell her some furniture I says Dorothy I don't believe I called to sell you any furniture and she stops and she's listening and I had to kind of speak over top and yell over top of her voice because she was so panicked and, and yelling at me for calling her and I said Dorothy I don't think I called you to sell any furniture she quiets up I says Dorothy I think I called to pray for you he said immediately her lungs went and she could breathe again. Twice, just within the last month, I've had two different people, one with who had come out of uh, massive surgery for her hip and come out of the surgery with more pain than she went into. Another gentleman I just got off the phone with, uh, or while well, texting, not, not a phone call, but I met him, just a perfect stranger, uh, in front of the Ross Creek store in the northern shoe swap, the guy's walking past me and he's complaining about his lower back pain. I'm like, that's strange. Why does somebody just start telling me about their back pain? I don't even know who the guy is. And then he like, stops, he turns around, and he's telling me about his back pain. So I thought, okay, well, sir, you're in for a miracle. Good news for you today. If you got that much to tell me about your back pain, then I got something to tell you about your healing. So sat down after a half an hour sharing the word with him, about how it's Jesus' desire and purpose and intention to heal and sharing scripture with him. I prayed for him and he got up and he goes, you know, it feels better. And uh, so this was four days ago. This morning he lets me know that his back still feels better. And so praise God. But I was encouraging him as I was encouraging this woman that I prayed for a couple weeks ago who had come out of surgery for her hip. And I said, you know what? Whatever the miracle, whatever God does for you, we have the power to multiply that miracle. Because it's it's rare that somebody gets like a complete 100% perfect healing. I, th I know that's what everybody likes to hear. And that's what we all like to think that's what the miracle is. And God likes to be involved in the process. He likes... Just like anybody, I mean, if you make a nice meal for somebody, you invite a friend over, you cook them a nice meal, you want to hear thank you. You're not being selfish, you just, you know, we want to be acknowledged for the fact that you did something nice for that person. You made them a nice meal, you want to hear thank you. Not no different. 
And our Father in heaven wants to be acknowledged. And that's what Jesus did. That was the miracle that Jesus saw. He didn't wait to say thank you after feeding 5,000 people. No. He, the little boy brought his lunch. A couple of loaves, a few fish. Jesus lifted that up right away. And he's like, thank you, Father. And he was grateful for what he had and that he was going to be able to share with this massive group of people. Now, it didn't make sense necessarily that he's going to be able to feed all these people with a couple of fish and a couple of loaves of bread, but he did. The miracle was in the multiplication of thanksgiving. And that's exactly what I encourage these people. Uh, the